Representative Srinivasan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman Fleischman, Boucher, and uh, Ranking Member Gail Laviol, and the distinguished members of the Education Committee, I'm glad to be here this afternoon. And uh, I'm going to be just briefly introducing two concepts that I'm in strong support of. And on either side of me are experts, people who know a lot more on the subject matter than I do. And I'm going to yield my time with your kind permission to them. I am in strong support of House Bill 5340, an act concerning a study of education savings accounts. And with me on my right is Jonathan Boucher from the uh, Center of Education Policy from the Heritage Foundation. And I would like him to say a few words on this bill, with your kind permission. And the other bill that I would be in strong support of is Senate Bill 359, which you've heard quite a bit this morning into the afternoon, prohibiting the desegregation of student data by ethnic subgroups. And for that is the professor from Pace University, Vin Hua New, on my left. She will be using the rest of that time to comment on that with your permission. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Representative Srinivasan um, took up a bunch of the time that he planned to yield, but we'll make some allowance for that. Please proceed. Thank you, uh, Chair Fleischman, uh, Chair Boucher, uh, Vice Chairs, and members of the committee. My name is Jonathan Butcher, and I'm Senior Policy Analyst at the Heritage Foundation. Prior to coming to Heritage, I was at the Goldwater Institute in Arizona, which was the first state to enact education savings accounts in the U.S. I was on the first steering committee for the accounts uh, there in Arizona. So what we're going to do, we're going to reset the three-minute clock, but we'd appreciate if you would stay within those three minutes like everyone else who comes here. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and be glad to. Uh, education savings accounts have helped children with special needs, children who lag behind their peers in traditional schools, uh, children of all walks of life across now five states around the U.S. With an education savings account, as designed in states like Arizona, Florida, Mississippi, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Nevada, the state takes a portion of a child's funds from the school funding formula and puts it in a private account that families can then use to buy educational products and services for their children. For children with special needs, that means that families can choose who the educational uh, therapist is for a child on the autism spectrum, for example. For children that lag behind their peers in math, uh, parents can hire a private tutor to help their child catch up to their uh, peers in the classroom. Research on the accounts has found that parents are, in fact, using the accounts for multiple products and services simultaneously. In Florida, 40% of children using the accounts are using them for multiple services. In Arizona, approximately one-third of families are doing the same. This is significant because in both Arizona and Nevada, the state Supreme Courts have issued rulings that distinguish specifically between traditional private school scholarships and these accounts. That means that these accounts are providing something unique and they allow families to customize their child's education according to their needs. These accounts are also very uh, modest in terms of participation, especially at the outset. These accounts have not caused any public schools to close, nor school districts. In Arizona, approximately 3,500 children, more than half of whom are children with special needs, are using the accounts. In Florida, about 10,000 children are using the accounts, all children with special needs, out of a population, an eligibility population of more than 300,000. The idea with these accounts is that every child deserves the chance to succeed, should have the chance to have their unique needs met. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Yes, I have a question, uh, first of all, on the education savings account and the other on the uh, student uh, de uh, aggregation bill as well. Uh, first on the, uh, you know, we had testimony just a minute ago, you probably were in the room, uh, by those that really opposed this vehemently and said that, uh, or stated that they thought that this would, uh, you know, be a destruction to education as we know it. What would be your answer to that? Senator and Mr. Chair, um, there are more than 50 million public school students across the United States. There are about uh, 400,000 children using some form of private school choice uh, in the United States. That's hardly uh, a threat 
Um, the, we want every child to succeed. Uh, education savings accounts provide a way for families to help children that are struggling in their local school, that have special needs, that have a variety of unique needs that parents can identify and find services for. And the accounts allow them to do that in a flexible way. Senator, do you have any additional questions? Thank you very much. Uh, also, uh, with regards to the uh, other bill that you were um, referring to, I think one of the things that struck me the most about what you said, uh, and I also agree with you wholeheartedly in that we should be attempting to um, unify rather than divide, and that so much of this is a way to divide, which goes contrary, I think, to what our mission is here um, as a government as a government, as a country, is bringing people together. And um, that's a different and interesting take on that comment about the more we parcel people out, we literally are separating them from the group. And we want to do everything we can to make sure everyone feels they belong uh, to this one great nation. So I appreciated that comment very much. Uh, thank you all for your testimony.